Welcome to Jackie's Craft Table. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining me today. I have on my desk a bunch of art supplies from Arteza. I accepted their invitation to try out and review some of their products. And I'm also going to create a card using these products. I'll show you what they sent me, and then we'll get on with the card crafting. First of all is this pack of bone folders in various shapes and sizes. There's a standard bone folder, a small one, a large one, and a curved tail one that's also a card creaser. I think I liked that one the best when I was actually making my card bases. They are very lightweight, and with all of these options, you're bound to find something that feels good in your hand to use. Let me just pull these out of the packaging. And here they are. I'll put them down on my desk so you can get a good look at them. Next up, they sent me some holographic chunky glitter. They come in packs of two, and I'm going to pull them out so you can see how beautiful they are. This one I'm pulling out is called Fairy Dust. I'm going to open the lid so you can see all the different colors inside. We have some smaller pieces and some larger pieces mixed together. I just love it. And this one is called Moonstone. I'm planning on making a lot of shaker cards with these. I thought they'd be so much fun for that. They sent me two sets of this next one. I'm just showing you one of the packs. There's a lot of glitter in each little jar, so you can make a lot of shaker cards with these. This first one that I'm opening is called Electra. I just love the teal and blue and green colors that you can see in it. I'm going to use my jewel picker here just to stir this around, give you a better idea of the different sizes included in this. The larger pieces of glitter you could really just pull out and glue to the front of your projects, just as you would some of your sequins. And then this last one is called Mermaid Rain. It's just magical like a mermaid. I love this one. I think my favorite has to be the fairy dust one. There's something about that soft purple color that I just love. This is a set of the Real Brush pens, and this is the 48 set. It includes four different trays of these pens in a wide variety of colors. I'm just going to lay them out on the desk so that you can see them all. And you also get an aqua brush. I love these because you just fill up the barrel with water and you can take your artwork on the go. I often use them at my desk too because you don't need to dip your brush into a cup of water and have all of that mess. You just have it right there in your barrel and it's very easy cleanup. You just wipe it off on a paper towel. And lastly, they sent me some of their watercolor paper. This is a two pack of their 140 pound 9 by 12 paper. It's a cold press, and it says it's good for watercolor techniques as well as mixed media. I'll open this pad and show you what the paper looks like. The top of the pad is glue bound. It's very easy to peel off and use. One side of the paper is rough, and the other side is very smooth. And of course, you can use both sides, whichever you prefer. So I'm going to use a piece of this paper to swatch out these pens. I always like to do that before I start a project with anything new. And it's fun to see all of the different colors. So I printed out a chart for these pens. Kathy Zilski created this for the set of 48 pens. So thank you, Kathy. I will link to her video below where she provides the free chart. Now into the swatching. My eye naturally gravitates toward anything pink, so I'm going to swatch the pink pens first. This is a piece of their watercolor paper that I cut down. This watercolor paper is very thick and it is kind of hard to move the pigment around. However, I'm going to show you how I used these pens. 
So I put a few drops of clean water onto an acrylic block. And of course, it doesn't have to be an acrylic block. Any surface would work. This pen I'm using is called Bubblegum Pink. I just love the names that they came up with for these markers. And I dip my marker into the clean water. And it comes out very pale when you do this. And then as you paint, it gets darker and darker. So you get a nice gradient effect. It allows you to see the colors from the lightest to the darkest. And it gives you a nice smooth effect. This next color is called Rouge Pink. I think this one is my very favorite. <laughs> and again, I dipped the tip of it into the clean water. And then just keep coloring until you get it at its darkest. I'm going to speed this up now and swatch out all of these beautiful colors. I was so impressed with all of them. But first, I want to show you how they behave on the Strathmore Bristol Smooth paper. This paper has kind of a coating to it. So when you use your real brush pens, you can get the color to move very nicely and blend out. So I'm putting down some of the rouge color and blending it out with my water brush. This is another great paper option for these pens if you want to get some nice darks and lights very easily. Here's a darker color for you to see. And it just blends out easily and you can really move the color around. And then I'm just wiping my water brush clean on a tissue. I just pour out some of the water by pressing it and wipe it off and then I'm on to the next color. I do wipe off my acrylic block and add fresh water every once in a while, just so I don't contaminate the different colors. And now I'm really going to speed it up fast. But just look at that beautiful gradient. Arteza did a really nice job picking out a wide variety of colors for this 48 pack. You can also buy these in smaller packs or larger packs. I really liked the 48 pack, but I know there's a lot of you out there that need all the colors. So I just wanted to let you know that there are more colors available. Arteza also gave me a coupon to pass along to all of my viewers, and it's a 10% off coupon off of their products. All of the links will be provided for you in my video description below. But the coupon code is Jackie's Craft Table 1, and it's the number 1. And my coupon code will be valid through September 18th of 2019. So if you're interested in any of these products, make sure you check that out. These products are very reasonably priced to begin with. And just look at all of these gorgeous colors. I had a really hard time deciding which colors to use from the project I'll be showing you in this video. And I will definitely be using these real brush pens on future projects to come. I also enjoyed working on this paper. I printed this out on the rough side. For most of my watercolor projects, I do like to use paper with texture like this one. However, the flip side of this paper is really nice and smooth, if that's what you prefer. Okay, so here are all of the beautiful colors. I'm going to hold up this chart so that you can see them. And the colors are just lovely. Now on to my project. I'm using a piece of their watercolor paper and I just used a pencil to draw in my flowers. I'm using a kneaded eraser just to lighten my lines. I didn't want any of the pencil showing behind the watercolor. And I'm going to use the same technique that I showed you. So I'm dropping some water onto my acrylic block. And with your watercolors, it's best to go lightest to darkest. So I'm starting out with a very light base color using some of this clean water to lighten up the pigment. And I am again using the rough side of this paper. And I decided to draw poppies so that I could use some of these beautiful pink inks. I'm starting off on my largest flower. 
and I'm going to be putting down lots and lots of layers just to slowly build up the colors and the form. I'm trying to leave in some white highlights at the top of these petals. You could always come back in with a gel pen if you wanted to or some white gouache, but I really like the look of the paper as the highlight. I'm moving from flower to flower just to give the paper time to dry. And I'm working on petals that don't touch each other just so I don't get any bleeding. I will have all of the colors listed over on my blog that I used in case you're interested in the exact colors I used. I end up doing a lot of layers on this paper and I had no problem with it peeling at all. It was just took a lot of abuse, this paper. Now I'm slowly darkening up the petals, especially in the shadows. I'm leaving a lot of lines in each of the petals because poppies have a lot of texture to them and lines and veins. I'm trying to erase some of my pencil lines here. I've recently purchased a really fun Faber-Castell eraser. It looks like a pencil, but it's really an eraser that you can sharpen and get really sharp. And the other side of it has a brush on it to brush away the eraser crumbs. Is that, <laughs> I can't think of what that is, the, the eraser debris. I will link to that too. I was just looking around the Blick store and saw that, and I'm really enjoying using it. There isn't a Blick store very close to where I live, but it's really fun to go there and browse once in a while. You can find some really fun things there. So now I'm using some really dark reds for the shadows of these flowers, and I'm also starting to put down some of the green for my leaves and stems and poppy buds. These real brush pens come to a very fine point, so that it was nice to be able to draw in the stems of my flowers and get into the veins of my leaves with very fine lines, so I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I do add in a few more leaves to this project just because it needed a little more greenery at the bottom. But I love poppy stems, how thin and wiry they look. It doesn't seem like they should be able to hold up those big, wide flowers. Poppies are one of my favorite flowers, I think. I probably say that about a lot of flowers. But it was really fun and challenging drawing these. I think the hardest part about this was trying to get that beautiful crinkled look to the petals. That was very challenging to me. And I just keep adding layers, as you can see. And I could have gone on longer. But there's a point where I just have to tell myself to stop. And it's done. But I really love painting. It's so relaxing. I also like to listen to music or watch shows while I'm painting. When you see my arm stretch across my mat, I'm reaching for the laptop that I have sitting there. And I'm switching the shows that I'm watching while I'm painting. Do any of you like to watch movies or shows while you're crafting? My laptop is on pretty much constantly when I'm in my craft room. I just like to have the noise or something in the background going on. Not that I don't have enough noise with my kids all the time. Lately, I've been watching some of the old episodes of Star Trek from back in the 60s. And yes, I am a Trekkie. <laughs> I have a lot of genres that I enjoy. I'm also a big Jane Austen fan. And I'll often put on one of the many movies made from her wonderful novels. Anyway, that was just a crazy little insight into what I like to do when I paint. I do end up adding another leaf at the bottom of this card just to kind of round out the painting. I'm going to cut down this panel so that it's slightly smaller than an A2 sized card, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm going to stamp out a sentiment. I've had this alt new set for many years, and there's a sentiment that says birthday wishes in here that I really love. I've used it often. But I'm going to stamp that onto the top right corner of my card with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. This is a waterproof ink that I'm using so that I can add a little more color behind these flowers. And I'm using a blue pen. I'm putting down a lot of color onto my acrylic block first, 
and then I'm adding some water. And I'm adding a lot of water to dilute the blue color because I just want it to be a pale, soft blue behind these flowers. My panel is now completely dry, and I'm just going to carefully paint around these flowers. This pretty blue color, I think, adds a lot to these flowers. I'm not trying for a really smooth blend. I just want an indication of blue sky behind these flowers. So this is another great way to use these pens. You scribble them out onto an acrylic block and pick up the pigment with your water brush. I'm going to set this piece aside to dry and make up my card base. I'm going to use the same watercolor paper for my card base. And out of one sheet, you can get two card bases. I'm using my paper trimmer to cut it down first to 11 and then to four and a quarter. And it makes for a nice heavy duty card base. And if you fold it so that the smooth side is on the inside, it's a great place to write your sentiments because it's nice and smooth. I pulled out my scoring board and now I get to try out all of these bone folders. I'm putting the paper smooth side down and I'm going to score it at five and a half. And then I can bend it over on itself and this helps it from cracking when you fold your paper. And those bone folders worked really nicely. The second one, I started scoring at five and a quarter and then realized it needed to be five and a half. But I can still use this card base. I'll just have to hide that extra score line with another card panel over it. Now, to add a little bit of sparkle to the front of my card, I'm going to use some of these moonstone chunky glitter pieces. I'm pouring out a little bit into my triangle dish. And they kind of have a pinkish hue to them. And I've selected different sizes to glue on around my flowers. I'm using little dabs of liquid glue for that. Now to attach the panel to my card base, I'm using some dot liner. And I'm using a lot because it is such a heavyweight paper. And I'm just attaching that to the front of my card base. For the very last touch, I'm going to add my stamp on the back of this. I was a little worried to see how it would work on this paper, but it just worked beautifully. And that completes this card. Thank you, Arteza, for sending me out these beautiful supplies. I really loved working with them. I have links to the products below and over on my blog. And thanks to all of you for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful day and get the chance to sit down and create something awesome. Bye.